Well, planets are great, and our early Earth was almost perfect. It was just the right distance from its star to contain huge oceans of liquid water. Around us, there's nothing. There's not even time or space. Imagine the darkest, emptiest thing you can, and cube it a gazillion times, and that's where we are. We shall send to the moon 240,000 miles away from the control station in Houston, a giant rocket. We propose that the moon formed inside a huge vaporous semester. The moon's special connection to Earth is because the moon formed inside the Earth when Earth was a synestia. The moon could have orbited inside the synestia for years. sister planet. It's far less than half the size of the Earth. And yet, despite the fact that it's smaller, the surface area of Mars that you can stand on is equivalent to the surface area of the Earth that you can stand on, because the Earth is mostly covered by water. Early Mars had a thick atmosphere, it had lakes, it had rivers, and it had an ocean that covered most of the Northern Hemisphere. Today, Mars is very different. Mars is inhospitable, no surface water on the planet, and a very, very thin atmosphere. inflatable pressurized buildings as well as the landers themselves. But this really only works during the daytime. There is too much solar radiation from the cosmic rays. So we really have to go underground. Here's what you need to live on Earth. Food, water, shelter, and clothing. And here's what you need to live on Mars. All of the above plus oxygen. Water is the basis of all life as we know it and it's far too heavy for us to carry water from the Earth to Mars to live. So we have to find water if our life is going to succeed on Mars. Most of our food will arrive from Earth and it will be dry.
our smallest terrestrial planet. It is the closest one to the sun, and it is an unbelievable object. It's actually a very difficult planet to get into orbit about because if you head off towards Mercury, the sun's gravity is pulling you all the way and you just whiz by it. It's very difficult to achieve orbit. Mercury is almost as dense as the Earth. Core is bigger than the core of the Earth. It generates its own magnetic field. It pushes the solar wind aside. We know that Jupiter, once it formed, must have had a profound effect on the formation of the other planets in the solar system, including, of course, our own Earth and the sources of our own existence. We know that Jupiter must have formed first, simply because it was able to grab hold of most of the available gas and did so before the sun turned on and blew all the gas away. To put it in context, if you were to scrape together all of the mass in all of the other planets, moons, comets, asteroids and other assorted lumps of rock in the solar system, you still wouldn't have half the mass of Jupiter. Europa has resurfaced itself. The gravitational interaction between the planet Jupiter and this moon and the other moons, the other Galilean moons, produces heat in the interior and it melts the water in this moon. That underneath the ice crust that's shown here is an ocean and that this ocean contains more water underneath the crust of Europa than we have water on the surface of this Earth. First of all, the planet itself, a giant ball of hydrogen and helium swirling with storms and whose internal structure was fairly unknown. The Saturn system is a rich planetary system. It offers mystery, scientific insight, and obviously splendor beyond compare. In fact, just studying the rings alone, we stand to learn a lot about the disks of stars and gas. Voyager told us a lot about the rings, but raised as many questions as answers. And as a matter of fact, we're still arguing about how old they are. It is the only object in the solar system that we have found that has liquid on its surface. It's not liquid water, it's liquid methane and ethane. 